He said, there aren't many doubters out there, but I plan to silence the ones that are left. You guys better watch out because my double leg is the best in the UFC. <laughs> I have the best double leg in the UFC. The natural, Kyle Bohoyo! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's dangerous! Listen to me, we're at it! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Kyle Barreo is joining us, making his second appearance on the show. I am currently in Florida. Matt is in New York. But aren't oh, you yes, lucky Jimmy. to have us both together? Kyle's a stud. He is a stud. And he loves jiu-jitsu probably almost as much as me, if not more. And me. Kayo, Bahayo, could you hear us? Yeah, what's up, guys? How are you guys doing? Yeah, hey, how are you, man? How you doing? I'm very good, guys. Very good to talk with you. You too, buddy. Yeah, um, it has been a while, and I was watching uh, Abus uh, Megamedov. I think his last fight was his loss to Strickland. And I know right. that everyone can be different from one fight to the next, but do you think that during that fight, he looked very, very tired in that second round. Uh, do you think he gassed himself in the first round? or And is that something he's prone to doing? What do you think? Yeah, yeah I think a little bit he gassed for sure because he came uh, in the beginning of the fight very hard, you know? But th there is something that people may maybe don't realize, that there was a five-round fight. And when you have a when you have a five round fight and you get a little bit tired in the first or second, you look to the rest of the rounds and you look like oh I still got like four more rounds to go, I cannot do it. It's like when you go on a hiking, you know, and you look the mountain and you say like man this mountain is so big, maybe I'm not gonna do it. You know, when when he get tired and it's just three rounds, so it's it's gonna be a little bit different than the first one. You know, you, you feel me? You got me? Oh, yes. yeah. Yes. Kyle. So, it's, it's something it's, around that. Yes, because he sees. He got dropped in the ocean, but in that three rounds, he sees the shoreline. You understand? He could get yeah, there exactly. possibly. Five yeah. rounds. I don't see any fucking land. And I got a guy trying <laughs> to kill me. That's a problem. It's, easy. So, it's easier to give up, you know? Oh, 100%. Jimmy likes to say, fear makes cowards of all men. And I go, Jimmy, you didn't leave that up. But it, I, but I, it, I know, but I say it like I made it up. Um, yeah, and I actually say fe a fear makes a coward of me. I don't say all of all men. I just say I it me. I keep it on myself. He added all men to make me feel better. But yeah, yeah. that could be it. It was a five-round fight. And uh, now, is it, do you think that he's giving up? Or do you think that it's almost like, you know, sometimes guys, I don't like to say take a round off, but just somehow will fight like uh, to conserve a little bit of energy to try to get to the, the fourth and fifth round. But did you feel like he kind of gave up in that fight? He looked a little mentally defeated. Yeah. Yeah, I think he gave up for sure. Like he, he he looked in the rest of the round, there was still four more rounds to do. So for sure he gave up. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I think he gave up a little bit for sure because he threw everything in, into the fight and he, he has no nothing to Strickland, you know? And Strickland was composure, was relaxed and was like, oh, now I'm start to fight, you know? So. So I think he gave up because all the, 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 the things that he saw made, made, made him like be, uh, stop believing himself, you know? Well, Jenny, I was going to say also, you know, I'm looking at his record and, you know, out of nine fights, only two went to a decision. So I think he's used to getting guys out of there, you know, because I'm um, different styles, you know, but, um, comes on so much pressure in that first round a lot of guys aren't getting out of it Sean Strickland you know that first round um you know uh a boost was was coming you know yeah he was full tilt and he was landing he was looked really good and he was landing yeah. so yeah. you know are we expecting even though again the three round not a five round are we expecting that intensity are we expecting that explosion in the first round 
I, I think so. I think a little bit, but I think he's gonna come with lesson learned. You know, oh. like I, I think that there is some goals on him. That is gonna say to him all the time, no, this time I cannot get tired. This time I cannot get tired. Almost like he was trying to prove something to someone, you know, because everybody is now saying that he has no gas tank. I don't believe it's true. He's a phenomenal athlete. He's a great, great fighter. And, and I don't believe that like, it's not about the gas tank. It's more about his mentality inside the fire, you know, but, but I think he may, it can be both, but I think at this time he's gonna he's gonna come with his lesson learned. He's not gonna come that hard in the beginning, you know. And you, I believe, uh, you predicted Strickland beating Adesanya. Uh, did you predict him winning by decision? Yeah, yeah, actually, yes, yeah. What uh, was I, it? Because Sean is so <laughs> interesting. He, I'm sorry, God, you you answer. I, I, I was, I was yeah. Because Strickland has a phenomenal gas tank. He can fight five rounds. And, you know, he went to the fifth round like the, like it was nothing, you know. So that's why. It's crazy to watch him, too, because I, I was watching this uh, this uh, fight with uh, Magomedov, and there's no – he Strickland gives nothing away on his face. Like, you can't tell if he's happy with a round. You can't tell if he's tired. You can't tell if he's hurt. It's like a, a fucking cyborg. And you said that uh, Megameto threw everything at him and then he still couldn't get him out of there. Do you think a guy like that does discourage people sometimes where it just seems like there's no way to put him away? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I train with Strickland and it's hard to train with him because of that. You know, he's always like, his face is always like relaxed. He doesn't like, seems to get hurt or to feel pain or something like that. So. There's no conversation, you know, because the body, the body talks with you, you know, and there's no conversation. You cannot like figure out what the guy is thinking or this or that, you know. So I think that's what makes Strickland a hard guy to fight. You know, there's no, there's nothing on him. You know, you, you can figure him out. Hey, Gaio, let me ask yeah. you, you know, I'm always fascinated when I see somebody with a, a neck tattoo or a face tattoo. Now, are you married or single? Uh, I'm what? You are you married or are you single? I'm I'm married. Yeah. Okay. I'm married. I, just, okay. I just had my son. My son is almost two months old. Yeah. Oh, that's ah, congratulations. Yeah. I got three kids. That's beautiful. Uh, Thank you. when you went to meet your wife's parents, did you wear a scarf? No, I'm fucking around. No, when you when you go to meet the parents and you got a big tattoo on your neck, I, you're a classy guy. You 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 present you, you know you don't look low class you look nice you know but again you got a fucking free spirit across your neck that could be scary what well, how did that go when you met the parents oh actually it was was nice he like her her father is like a big brother to me you okay. know we, we smoke joint together when we can you know so it's like he's he's a very nice guy with me her mom I always make good food for me, you know, like oh, this is they, they didn't even like talk to me about my tattoo, like asking why or this and that. And, and when I did this tattoo, it was before UFC, but I already knew that I was going to show this tattoo in UFC, you know, this message from this tattoo in the UFC. So I was always talking about the message that I had about this tattoo. And, but there was even a subject, you know, <laughs> it yeah, wasn't even a right. subject in our, in our talks, you know. Hey, right, listen, that's that's the kind of hey, that's what you want. My in laws the only, they rule also. Yeah, yeah they rule yeah. also. The only thing that they ask is like, oh, did it hurt? That 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 was the only ah. thing, you know, that people ask. Like, did it hurt? I said, a lot. You don't even imagine how, how it hurt. How <laughs> long did it take him to do it? How long were you there for? That I'm a look guy because my tattoo artist is so is the same guy that did all my tattoos. So he and he's very fast, you know. So was one hour, oh, but wow. it was one hour of pure pain, you know, oh, shit. it was. It yeah, was the neck crazy. is so sensitive. It's, it's, it's... Yeah, exactly. It's like, and that's a funny, funny story about it. That when I get to the, to, the, to the tattoo shop, he came to me and was like, oh, I have a cream that we pass and you feel nothing. Okay. But people use this cream in a wrong way. That, that's what he's saying to me. People use this cream in a wrong way. I need to hurt a little bit your neck to put the cream and then get into your skin. And then when it comes to the ink, it's not gonna hurt. And then, okay, I said, okay. So he came with the ink, ink machine 
with no with no with no ink and then he just got hurt in all my neck it hurted a lot and he was like no 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 it's gonna it's gonna be good it's, it's okay and then i stay like 30 minutes with all with, with uh relax with him with paper here and trying to 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 you know make effect and then when when he started to go he came with alcohol and was like oh i'm gonna spray some alcohol if it hurts the thing doesn't work but if it doesn't hurt the thing worked and he came with alcohol he put it and was like oh i feel nothing and he was like okay so maybe it worked you're not gonna feel nothing and i was like thinking to myself it's impossible that i don't feel nothing when you're going to the with the ink you know it's gonna be impossible and as, as soon as he get as, as he touched my skin it was pure pain man. There was nothing like it. this cream is shit, you know. <laughs> like <laughs> the worst anything, you know, was That's pure, crazy. pure pain. Was like, was crazy. It was almost like going to fighting, and then when you get out of fighting, it was like, yes, because we went tattoo ended. I was like screaming, like, yeah, I did it, you know. It was 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 pure pain, bro. Was there any thought of because you know you can't stop? <laughs> like if he has an F and an R, you can't just stop. You have to finish. So you, but you didn't even consider stopping once you felt it. No, 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 no I didn't even consider, bro. I was like, let's go, let's do it. It's going to be fast. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna be enough. Uh, Jimmy, I was going to ask, what is the message for free spirit? Just that alone. So, just yeah. It's like, I, I've, when I, when I deal with some injuries, I've been through some hard times in my career, you know, and I got some anxiety crisis, you know, like trying to breathe and I could breathe <laughs> like it was bad. I spent like one and a half year with this, like uh, it, it, sometimes it happens, you know, and there was a like time anxiety? that it always, it, yeah, anxiety, you know, anxiety. like some crisis, you know, anxiety, you know, and the, in the, the moment that they always happening, you, when I was getting into the car to go to my house, that's, that's the moment when I got most, most anxiety. I don't know, because, you know, the, the, the thoughts is low, flowing and you think about everything I'm, and I'm hurt, I'm injured, you know, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> like, you know, like, no, there's no breath in me, you know, and yeah. then there was a music named Free Spirit. And that was the only music that was calming me down. You know, oh. as soon as I got into the car, I just put the music and the music is so calm and it calmed me down. And the magic behind that is because I always try to be myself, like to be authentic, authentic. And in a world that we live today, people always want to be like other people because we see Instagram, you see uh, yeah. social media. People try to be like everyone. Like, oh, I want to have this that this guy have. I want to be like this. I want to be like that. Like you only going to be free if you be yourself. You know, you're not letting anything die inside of you and you're being yourself. You're authentic and you have the courage to be a free spirit in this world. You don't need to fit in any pattern that people think that you need to be. You know, that's the message behind that. And when you would talk about like the breath, would it be that thing where you can't like reach the top of it? It's like that last little click when you breathe that makes it feel full. You keep hitting yeah. the ceiling and you can't yeah. get over it. Yeah, I've had that too. It's stress, panic. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. It's very unpleasant. And you're like, I can't breathe, but you know you're breathing. Like, I am breathing, so I don't know why I'm thinking that. It's just you get caught up in your own head. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. It's, Do you meditate it's, or anything? It's, it's only, yeah, it helped me a lot, meditating. It helped me a lot, yeah. I think right now I, I almost don't have this anymore, you know? Only when I think about it, but then I, I'm like, I cannot breathe on my mouth. I need to breathe on my nose. That's yeah. a good technique that gets better. Every time that I call myself doing like trying to go, I was like, no, 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 I just need to breathe from my nose. And then, and then you just forget, you know? Yeah. That, man, it's a nice way yeah. of dealing with anxiety. Hey, let me ask you, you were a fan of anime? A uh, few ones, like Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, ah. you know? Yeah, I like yeah, it. Man. I love it. That stuff's yeah. cool, dude. Did you ever think about going to a Comic Con? Do you know what that is? I just went to one. Yeah, already. I already went to a Comic Con here in Brazil. There was there was a big, big, big one here in Brazil. And I went there. Actually, the UFC brought me there, you know. It was good. It was a good, it was a good, good, 
we're, we're, we're things to do. Yeah, did you meet man. people? Did you take pictures with people? Or who, do, who did you want to meet at Comic-Con? Uh, I, I, I had some photo with the Hulk, with some Avengers, you know, there was some Naruto guys, Sasuke, Naruto, Itachi, some guys from the anime, you know, it was good, it was good. It was fun. A lot of fighters, man, they like the anime. One of my students, Marcus, loves it, my brother-in-law, Edwin. What is it? Is it, is it the message, the stories? It can't be the card, yeah. it can't be the artwork, or could it be? No, I, no, I think, I think. I think it's the message behind that, you know, that inspires you. When you're a little kid, you know, and you try and you're kind of building your dreams inside of you. Yeah. And, you know, like for example, Naruto, he's he's a kid that got bullied all his life because he was different, because of some accident that he that that he, he passed. And he was always believing himself, always telling people, I'm gonna be Hokage. Hokage is like the most strongest guy in the in the in the village you know the guy that protects okay. the village and everybody was making fun of him saying that he couldn't do it he passed through a lot a lot of things he was always saying i'm gonna be hokage no matter what i'm gonna be hokage i'm never gonna give up i'm gonna be hokage so when you're a kid there's something that inspires you you know i think i yeah. think it inspired me a lot that's awesome man i love that shit i feel the same way about like like comic books and comic book movies. I, I watched as a kid, comic books, I should say, as a kid and movies I love. Jimmy has a little dark heart. All he likes is Ozzy Osbourne. That, that's what puts him, you know, he's like, ah, and they bite, they bite the head off the fucking rabbits and shit. I don't know. I, look, I used to like comic books when I was a kid. I collected a lot, but then I kind of stopped as, as I got older. Um, oh. Now, you, 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 I want to ask you about chemistry too. Uh, that was something that you wanted to pursue as, as a life. I, I find that so difficult. Like I, I, my brain doesn't work for that stuff. Um, what yeah. did you like about it? And do you, st is it something you're still interested in? Yeah, actually right now, there's nothing that interests me about chemistry anymore because I need to, I need to MMA and I just do deep inside of it. You know, everything that I do today in my life is just about MMA. But right. when, when, when I started the high school, I just fell in love with chemistry because I was already uh, doing uh, classes from math because my grandpa is a math teacher. So I was always good with numbers and this. I was, I was kind of a nerd when I was in the school. And then when I started to, to, to study about chemistry, I just fell in love. Like everything was start to fit in, you know, I was like, man, this is a new world. And then in the first year of the high school, I started to study something of chemistry from the second year, from the third year. And I started to give classes to my friends that was, that was going bad in chemistry, you know? So I was always fascinated about it, you know, about numbers, about formulas, about chemistry, and about that. Because everything is chemistry, you know, everything. Is that type of brain like where you very because your chemistry is very specific and numbers they're not forgiving you know five plus five will always be ten when you when you're fighting and you're figuring out things and you have to rely so much more on intuition and on on a feeling you get uh when you're in the cage or something that just doesn't feel right that so it's like a, almost like a totally opposite part of your brain right yeah for sure i think it helps me a lot because is some some methodologies that I have to study about MMA and inside of fighting, I just pay attention to some things, to some things that people don't pay attention, you know, like the position of the head, and you know, like the 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 corporal talking, the language, you know. I think I think it helps me a lot. When a guy is punching, Strickland said that he watches. He doesn't watch their face. Where do you look at an opponent? Do you look at the shoulders, or where do you try to focus when you're fighting? I, I kind of like a little bit into the neck because you can feel the shoulders, and it's not far away from the hips too, you know? So kind of chest and neck, that's where, where I like because everything that he needs to, to put, he needs to, to circle his body. So every time that I see this, I know that it's coming something, you know. And the other thing that I that I keep looking a lot is the front foot, you know. Every time that he put pressure on the front foot, it's coming something hard, you know. That's going to be happening a lot with Abus. Yes. Well, this is a great uh, great card. And uh, good luck on uh, 
on Saturday. This is unbelievable, and you're 14 and one. So congratulations on this great streak you have going. And uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more. And after that last great submission you had too, um, I'm sure you're looking forward to this one. And uh, we'll talk to you again, man. Thank you for coming on. Have a great fight yeah. on Saturday. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Thank you so much. All right, Kyle. Take care of yourself. Be good. All the best. Yeah. Hey, Jimmy. What, buddy? Jimmy. I don't know. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> All right. Listen, Derek Lewis uh, against uh, John I, Almeida in from Sao Paulo. It's uh, November the 4th, of course, this Saturday, 6 p.m. prelims. Oh. Main card is 9 p.m. Oh, wow. Um, okay. All right. 6 p.m. It starts at 9 p.m. And it's in Brazil. And now, Jimmy, I was going to say, oh, what were you saying? Derek Lewis was arrested um, and charged with reckless driving. He was doing 136 in a Lamborghini. Derek. I dude, What are you doing? Derek Lewis is so awesome, man. I know, but it's like, come on. It's too risky. You're going to get fucking, you're going to get killed driving that fast. The fuck you doing? It's insane. Can I tell tell a joke that's probably good in 1982? He's probably just watched Cannonball Run. Kids, kids out there, I want you to watch uh, Google Cannonball Run. And no the- need. I've seen it. I still didn't. What about it. the sequel? Cannonball Run 2. Jackie Chan, I think, is in that one, too. But let me tell you, what a- I should go back and revisit that movie with my kids. I really should. The other night, I put on Fright Night with them. How was it? It was. Oh, oh by the way, it was good. It was. Oh, we didn't watch all of them. Can I tell you this? And I got a, a bone to pick with the people that made Megan, that horror movie. Because it's not bad. It's about a little girl doll. Oh, that, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't like, see it, but right. She starts killing people, but she really, like, cares for the little girl. And that she starts killing. So it's like she's killing people, but she likes the little girl. She's not totally evil. So they did a reboot of Chucky a few years ago, right? I forgot when it came out. But according to the, uh, the Sarah girls, they're telling me it came out before Megan. My my family's a bit of ghouls. They like the horror shit. So two out of three of my girls and my wife. Yeah. So they looked it up. Now this reboot of Chucky, we gave that a chance. As far as reboots go, it was good. It was freaking good. The doll was creepy. It was an updated, like more tech savvy Chucky. There was a different backstory. Yeah. But it was a, wasn't that bad at all. I thought it was going to be just hot garbage, but it was good. And those people with Megan, shame, shame, shame. Because if that came after this, you know, the, thing, the thing that was different with this up rebooted Chucky uh, was the same thing. He, the, the original, he was a, an evil person in there. He didn't give a shit about the kid or anybody because he was like an evil guy. That spirit went to the doll. But this one was more about the programming and this and that. and. He's seeing the kid like he the kid the kids are watching a, they're watching a horror movie him and his buddies the kid they're watching like Leatherface and all that so he's seeing that and he's seeing the kids laughing at it you see him looking at that next thing you know he's cutting off someone's face and but it's fucking great pretty cool so I feel that Megan the people that made that they bit off of uh oh, rebooted maybe. Chucky so hey Chucky. You got legs. They might be little plastic legs, but you got legs. What a good show. What a good movie. Wait, let me ask you. You thought it bit off. How much sooner, how much difference in the time where they came Jake, out? Because I'm going to ask Jake. Sorry. I want to exactly what you're asking. Jake, the reboot of Chucky came out like maybe either 2017, 18, or 19. Oh, like a few years. Okay. A few years ago. And then look out. Look when Megan came up. I'm sorry to put you to work. Child's Play 2019. Okay. Oh, okay. Now let's see. When did Megan come out? This is exciting. This is exciting. Not just me. I can't take full credit. This is the Sarah Girls. Megan 2022. Yeah. Fuck you, Megan. Hey, Megan. Yeah. Fuck you. She I thought maybe they both went in a certain direction, but that makes sense. Three years is plenty of time to steal. Three years. They saw that Chucky was being a yeah. nice girl with some issues and it, I thought it was just a bite off it, and now it's even more of a bite off it when I saw it, when I see this reboot. I wrote so, a horror oh, movie about a doll. What's that? I wrote a horror movie about a doll. It's very frightening. Yeah. 
Tell it's, me. Are you joking? The, no. The kids bring, bring home a doll, oh. and it comes to life at 3 o'clock in the morning, and it hides all their pencils so they can't do their homework. <laughs> you don't Jimmy, like my horror movie? I, I don't. Jimmy, Frightening. I, they want to do their homework, and they can't find their pencils. I think they, they'd like that. Couple of great fights. By the way, have we talked yet about? Uh, I wasn't here the other day because I was on a cruise. Dan Hooker versus Bobby Green, the co-main. Uh, Dariush uh, Armand Sarukian. Have we spoken about that? Holy shit! Is that a good fight? That is a good fight. I'm looking over. Well, that listen. That's a. That's on uh, in Austin. If, uh, that's uh, sorry, buddy. That is December the second at the Moody Center in Austin. Well, I'm looking forward to that. I really respect. Um, uh, B- Benil Hooker, Bobby Green. Oh, I, I I respect both. I respect everybody. Pretty oh, Benil Darius. Um, yeah, okay. But Benil don't like it. No, Benil is fighting Gabbard, correct? Uh Benil. Oh, no, 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 I'm on Sarukian. I only. I'm like. I'm. I'm fucking horrible. I always mess those two up, and they're both studs. And, <laughs> and they, they fought. fought. And they fought. Sarukian. Yeah. Didn't um Gamrot? Didn't Matus win that fight? Uh. I thought it was a decision. Let me see. Gamrot Saruki. I'm an idiot. Uh, All right, that was a bomb. I think I think he might have, but I don't know if it. I thought uh, I thought Gamrot won by decision. Well, listen, uh, man. All I know is well. all I know is Saibian's no easy easy walk in the park. But you know, either is Benil. Benil's coming off a tough fight, and Benil's yeah. Benil's one of those guys. When they say a guy will fight anybody, he's that guy. Yeah, he is. A lot of people won't. They'll say the rankings or this or that. But Benil really is that guy. What are what is the rankings with both of them? Uh, Benil's number four, uh, and Sarukian's number eight. So, yeah, you know, tough, and after that last fight, fight, Benil I think had to go down a little bit because that was a rough last fight for him. Um, you know, but I'm sure he'll try to work his way back up, and I'm sure he'll be successful. That's a, Sarukian's very tough though. Hey man, I'm looking at this card, and I'm excited about it. And Derek Lewis, man. I love he's him. He's coming off that fucking how, how quick was his last fight? That was that jumping knee to the face. Oh my god, yeah. That was oh, rough, bro. That I'm, was... I'm sorry if you can hear my typing in the computer. I apologize if that's coming through really loud. Uh please let me know if it is. I know that's very annoying. That was uh, oh yeah, over uh, uh Rogerio de Lima. Yeah, first round 33 seconds. Dude, that was awesome. Uh Vince Pichel Pich- is coming back. And yes. He's, he's fighting uh Ismail Bonfam which is going to be a great play. I, I like Vince. Vince is one of those throwbacks, man. He's a throwback. He's the type of guy to be like, yo, to put a little spit in his mouth, a little chew in his mouth. I don't know. Yeah. A little spit in his mouth. A little chew Clay Guida, Joaquin Silva, uh, Misha Tate. Misha's fighting again against uh, uh, Julia Avilia. And, of course, uh, Sean Brady against Gaslam is a great fight. And Rob Font against Davison Figueredo. An extremely good fight. Jimmy, what else – it looks like um, uh, Ian Gary is claiming that Leon Edwards' insecurities had him booted from the gym because they're in the same division. Um, but Leon Edwards' gym has responded oh, to let's his hear about insecurity. That. I, I, got, uh, I could weigh, weigh in my, my two cents on that, but go ahead. What do you think about that? What do they What say? do you think? Because I haven't read the response yet, to be I honest. I read the response, and uh, Ian's saying that he thinks he's insecure and he got him out of – Lee, it's Leon's gym, correct? It's Leon's. He's training. All right, so go ahead. I got my thoughts on it, but let's see what uh they what said. The sorry, they said he did not add to the team's culture. Um, team Renegade said sometimes the coaches allow fighters to come in from the outside, but this is very much a privilege and not the norm. If the coaches feel it's not adding to the team's culture, a fighter is refused entrance. Ian Gary's more nomadic approach to preparation has given him great results, but it's not in line with what we are creating at Team Renegade. This has nothing to do with one specific fighter or a specific coach. I guess Nomadic is is implying that he's more of a loner um, and maybe they don't think he's as much of a team player. That's kind of a vague response. I don't know what to make of that. What do you think, Matt? You t- well, I like. I know I have a very strong opinion on it. Okay. I would like. To, I would like to know yours first. I don't you know, like I don't. That. Leon doesn't strike me as very insecure. But is it possibly that, like, hey, they don't want to give away a strategy or training to a guy they're going to be fighting 
sometime probably in the near future. Um, I don't know. I don't know enough about their personalities or what they look for. And I, and I don't know enough about MMA gym culture to know what would fuck up a, a vibe in a, in a gym and what wouldn't. Now, look, there's, there's a couple different ways of looking at I'm it. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I've actually, they, they've said that in certain gyms about me. They said because I'm too good that I make everybody else insecure. Well, you know, jury's out on that one. But listen, the thing is this. Right. The thing is this. Uh, I've been in the business a minute, like the kids say, you know, uh, I've, I've been not only running a school for the last over 20 years, you know, my, my own academy, but I got a fight team also, you know, that's some good training the other night for the guys at MSG. I'll tell you, but I'll talk about that after, but, uh, so now let's say uh, I'll choose a fighter. That's, that's kind of chilling out a little bit. Let's say raging out like Quinta. You know how tight we all are raging out. Yeah, of course. Let's say fucking, I don't know, uh, any 155-er. Henry Cejudo. Another top pro, top 10 guy. Is he? Enough! Sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. I'm just yelling guys. I'm sorry. No, in the same way. Okay. Rich Franklin. Okay. You done? I'm, 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 I can never get upset with you. I love you. I so hope much. not. I'm, just, I'm naming <laughs> guys. I'm naming 155ers. This is the point. Okay. okay. If somebody is coming in that is even a potential matchup, especially uh, like this Ian Gary, I mean, is he undefeated right now? I, be, I mean, what do you think? I think he might be. Hold on one in second. The UFC is. Yeah. Let me, look at his, let me look at his record. He just got like a tough fight, too. Spot. He's like, the, so he could be a legitimate, you know, title contender. So yeah. why? If you feel this guy is coming in with only his interest, why is he? Why would you help get this guy better if he's going to be a future opponent? Why? What? The that's fuck? right. That's not about being insecure. That's your house. That Leon. Yeah. It seems from the corner work and his guys, it seems like they're very tight. So, like myself and Ray Longo, we got Matt Vervola. Like, if somebody's coming in, like if Patty Plimpton's Pimplet's in town and he wanted to come. And, and train at Longo's, and I doubt that would be okay. You know what I mean? I mean, right. So it's like, you know, uh, I mean, and, but yet, yeah, but yet, there's other times when there's like a fr that you got another guy in the UFC, and I know we had Adrian Yanez down before, and you know, I mean, like, you know, there's guys that come in friendly, Bryce Mitchell, but there's no immediate threat. There's a good vibe there. If a guy comes in with a uh, a, um, a, a Ronin uh, attitude, a, a masterless samurai, uh, you know what I mean? That just is yeah. looking to absorb and leave, absorb and leave, and they don't fit in with that chemistry of the school, bounce them right away. I'm 100%. Yeah. I agree with Leon. And you don't need it. How about this? I had a, one girl come down, and I have another girl, that, that this girl, Lauren, uh, who's like family, you know, she's tied with my kids. My wife, she's she's been a fighter of ours for a long time, and she goes, you know, you know, Matt, I, I don't ask a lot, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, ruffle any feathers. I she didn't say ruffle any feathers. That's something I would say. Uh, that's goes, a good expression, yeah. But she goes, I don't like this girl's a nasty girl. I got the problem with her in the past. I wait, hold on, Laura, don't even finish your sentence. I yeah. got the girl out of here. I got the girl. What? Why? Now I know Lauren. I don't know this other girl. Do I have to hear the other girl's side? No, I don't got to hear shit. And guess what? December 1st, Lauren's fighting that girl in Atlantic City. <laughs> so, oh, so you know, it worked yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and I'll be cornering up in, uh, at, at the Ring of Combat. The great Lou Negley is Ring of Combat. Well, so, that was kind of my guess, Matt, by the way. That was with, with Leon because it, 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 Ian Gary's number 10. So he's on the move up, and he will probably be facing him if Leon stays champion. See, I, I don't think that's crazy at all to not want a guy. It's not like – oh, shit, hold on. Ugh, it's fell out of my ear. Uh, it's not like Marab and Aljo, where they've been training together for years and they're legitimately friends. That that's a different scenario. This is a guy coming in from outside. So yeah, I don't think that's crazy. Hey man, it's just so exciting. You know, I love that there's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah listen, you agree with me on that. I just yeah. love that there's fights on again. You know, this weekend. I don't like when I have a fight a weekend when there's no fights. You understand, Jimmy? It, it, it depresses me. Yeah, it's part, of, it's part of my like my weekend. I train. Yeah. When are you going to come out to a nine a.m.? Oh, you know, no, no, that's not good for you. You can't get up on Saturday mornings. No, I'm really bad at getting up. Um, 
uh, when I'm not doing radio. If I slept better, I might get up. But I go to bed late and I just, I, I don't sleep well at all. And I'm always exhausted. I mean, um, I'll write a clip at night, Jimmy. Your friend might be dying. I'm exaggerating. But I got stomach issues, Jimmy. I'm up at an hour at a clip. You know what I mean? Hour at a clip, Jimmy, with my stomach. What do I do? Well, is it, like, not to be too graphic, but are you just sitting there waiting for things to happen or is it just yeah. happening for an hour? No, it's not happening. Well, it's like intervals. It's okay. Like just coming out of me like lava for an hour. Yeah, I know like, what you're saying. I'm like, I still feel bloated. I'm pushing on my stomach. All right, the audience doesn't want to hear this. My point is, long story short, because I talked about it on, on, uh, on Rogan also, I was supposed to take a shit in a fucking thing and bring that sample to get tested. I had to change my insurance recently. I had a thing. So now that doctor doesn't take the insurance. Now I got to go through this whole thing again about getting a doctor and find a doctor to check. It's a nightmare. It's a fucking nightmare. I changed insurance recently. They fucked me too. They're, they're, they're just the worst. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's crazy about Leon. That makes perfect sense. The Sean uh, O'Malley commented where he thought it was perfectly legit, but he thought they made it a little bit weird. Um, he thought they made it a little bit weird. Who did? So, he, Leon's gym, by the way. I guess the way they said it, he thought they made it a bro, little I'll make strange. it weird. I'll slam the door on somebody's nose, bro. Oh, you, you thought Ian made it weird. Sorry, I'm I'm oh. misreading that. You know what? Oh. Apologies. Uh, I he, I misread what he wrote. You thought that uh, he, they thought he thought Ian. He said what Leon Edwards did in his gym was fine. If that's your gym and you don't want someone there because it's an opponent, hey bro, we don't want you there. Oh, I thought Ian handled it uh, weird by making it a big deal. Apologies. He thought Ian man, made it weird. Hey, listen, man, I'm weird. Jimmy, what a fucking show. Well, I'm gonna have to use the restroom soon. So why don't we plug? <laughs> what we got to plug? Well, tonight I'm not going to be in uh, the Fat Black Pussycat because I am in Florida. But next week and every Wednesday through November, I will be there. And uh, just to check my calendar, a bunch of new dates coming soon. Can we plug that UFC again? Because you said it started at 6 p.m. and then it it starts at 9 p.m. The main card's at 9 p.m. Main's at 9, prelims. It is a great fight. Jalen Ahmed against Derek Lewis. And that is this Saturday, 6 p.m. on uh, Eastern and uh, main card, 9 p.m. Eastern on uh, ESPN+. Plus. Jimmy, I miss you. I miss you. I miss you too, buddy. Dave travels back. Yes. And now I got to do three things. Yep. Sit, shit, and then shit again. That's I'll true. See you I was soon. going to say cack of poopy duty. But listen, let's be mature about this. Jimmy, I'll see you next week. I'll probably FaceTime you later. Bye, buddy. Bye, Jimmy.